many people will be familiar with this hotel here, a lovely hotel outside Castlebar, it's Brafie House Hotel. What people may not know, however, is that the second hotel here, which was like the sports hotel, uh, has been turned into a hotel for Ukrainian refugees. So if you want to just come around here now, we'll have a look and you'll see all the Ukrainian cars in the car park. So here you can see the Woods Hotel. So I don't know how many hundred refugees are staying in there at the moment. Now up here is the event center, a big massive building. Uh, this was actually the vaccination center up until very recently. And then in the last two weeks, they've converted it into accommodation, temporary accommodation for what looks like a couple of hundred people. Now, we tried to get information from the manager of Brafie House uh, and from the county council as to who is going in here, how long are they going in here for, where are these people coming from, and they won't give us any of that information. They haven't released anything publicly, so nobody in the community, in this little community of Brafie, just outside Castlebar, knows anything about who might be landing in this hotel. So I'm going to try and go in now and have a little look around I'll give you a little bit of a tour of what's happening inside. Hello, Tom Gilligan. Oh, hi, Tom. How are you? Uh, Tom, my name's Stephen Kerr. I'm just, um, I was just wondering if I could have a quick chat with you just about what's going on at Bravey House. Yeah, of course, Stephen. No problem at all, yeah. Great, thanks. Yeah, there's there's just some some rumours that um you know there's maybe accommodation um being made in the event centre there um so I was just wondering can you is there anything official can you tell me anything about what's going on? Well, I know that, that there is work there is work ongoing there at the moment. Yeah. Okay, and what is actually but, going on, Tom? Well, I I'm not really I, Stephen. To be honest with you, I mean it's 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 something I'm not really. At liberty to say, well, to be honest, and I don't, I don't mean to be, but I mean that's, you know, that's with um, with with Bravey House itself and and the, the department. Okay, so that nothing publicly has been put out about what's going on. Um, well, I'm not sure what you mean by 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 publicly. Like like, I mean, like, like officially, like, what have you said officially about what's happening there? Well, I haven't really said anything officially at the moment. You know, I haven't said anything um, because I suppose, in a sense. You know what's what's happening. I suppose at the moment we're dealing with, dealing with a very fluid situation in relation to um, accommodation for for uh, refugees. You know, so I mean, you know, it, it, it's changing on a, on a on a continuous basis. But I mean, the, the, we don't put ads in the paper and like that to say what what's happening. Could you mean? No, that wouldn't be the norm. Are you you're are you happy enough that everyone that's that's coming in that's going to be coming in there is has been fully vetted? Well, Stephen, to be honest with you, I mean, you're sort of to me as though you're sort of stereotyping people there. Is it? Just to be clear, what I'm saying is there are concerns around the the Brafie area that there are up to maybe three hundred people going to be going into this a sports hall, this event centre, and that many of whom um, may not be. Be getting vetted properly. We don't know where they're coming well, from. Stephen, we don't know I, 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 is that look, correct? I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to make any comment on that because that's, you know, right. I mean that's. You but know, but the, you, you're you're the, happy that there's no risk to the community anyway. I, I'm happy that there's no risk to the community. Yeah. Do you know how many people are going to be moving into the event centre under that contract? I don't know. I I don't have a definitive number. No, I don't have a definitive number. Can you? Is it dozens or hundreds? Or would you know? Uh, I don't. Ha I don't have a definitive number. Okay. Do we know where these people are coming from, Tom? Do we know where they're coming from? Areas. Yeah. Well, they're coming from various areas. They're not coming from one from one specific location, if that's what you mean. So they're not all from Ukraine, is is that correct? Uh, they may not all be from Ukraine. Oh. But, but they, you know, so the, yeah. And how long is the the contract for? How long is the county council? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, 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 I can't answer that. What's happening in Brafie is concerning for a number of reasons. Number one, there is no guarantee that the people coming to the event centre will be women and children. 
it is likely that they won't be, as most non-Ukrainian migrants appear to be male adults. And as we now know, 39% of Ukrainian refugees are male. Number two, many so-called refugees are coming from countries not at war, such as Georgia. The National Indoor Arena in Blanchardstown has been filled with men referred to as Ukrainians. However, note in the following clip that this man appears to have a British or Pakistani accent. I know you're in me. Who are you? I'm Michael Jackson. You're Michael Jackson? Yeah. You look like saying. for you to take video. I can do what I like on my public ground. I can do what I like on my public ground. That's no problem. You can do it too. Strolls and rows of men lying in their beds. Number three. Zero migrants are vetted. There are no preliminary interviews. Any criminal records or predatory history can be easily concealed. Thousands of migrants are destroying documents and passports when they reach Dublin airport. They're refusing to tell Gardaí where they came from. These men should be immediately deported. Not doing so sends the message that Ireland is a place to conceal any alarming red flag behaviour that you'd rather not disclose. Ostensibly, it is reasonable to assume that we have already attracted a number of criminals to these shores as a result. Number four. The media deliberately chooses not to report on various incidents that have taken place around the country involving migrant men staying in the hotels of small towns. A number of children and women have been targeted in various ways. The culprits go unpunished and are moved on to some other unsuspecting town. What message does this send to them? They also have nothing to do all day and are surely likely to re-offend and keep targeting the most vulnerable. When the media is forced to report a crime of a serious nature, it's fleeting and the details scant. If a crime takes place in your town, be aware that it will be dismissed and locals will be called liars and racist by the establishment and media. Number five, you need a criminal record check in order to take refugees into your home. You also need one if you work within a school or another facility catering for vulnerable groups. Yet the migrants entering into the event centre will be in very close proximity to the local primary school and also in close proximity to the children in the hotel, despite being completely anonymous. Number six. Sweden has in recent years adopted a mass migration policy which has utterly failed. It is now one of the most dangerous countries in Europe for women and has the highest homicide rate in the EU. The recent horrific rape, torture and murder of 12-year-old Lola Daviet in France was scarcely reported on in the Irish media. Except to report as racist any association made with her killer being a migrant who had been served an expulsion order to vacate the country prior to the murder. How long before something terrible happens to a child here at the hands of a migrant? Number seven. As you can hear from the phone call with Tom Gilligan, Director of Services at Mayo County Council, any query into the lack of background checks carries an accusation of stereotyping, despite this being a valid and in fact a vital question. Mr Gilligan is happy to stand over his assertion that there are no safety concerns regarding the community, despite it being impossible for him to give these assurances in good faith. Information is not very forthcoming, the community has not been consulted with, and any queries seem to be met with surprise. This shows a total lack of regard for the community, in addition to the attitude that racism is at the heart of any concerns. Given the clear lack of regard, it is advisable to raise concerns now, with assertiveness, rather than waiting until migrants have already been inserted into the community. Now is the time for action. You have rights in your community. Councils and politicians have obligations to you. Even if they have reneged on those obligations in recent times, remind them who they are supposed to serve. Ask them what plans they put in place to increase the number of Gardaí in the area in response to the population increase and in light of the fact that these migrants have had no background checks. And finally, here's an article from today's Connacht Telegraph. The headline reads, Housing of Ukrainian Families in Mayo Business Park Questioned. Here we have the local politicians giving out about the lack of consultation that took place with regard to housing migrants around Castlebar. This is not good enough. These people are supposed to be our public representatives and look out for our best interests. Why do they not know what's going on? At the bottom of this article, they casually drop in the fact that the sports centre in Brafie is now also due to be used as an international protection centre. 
to accommodate 200 people from many nations. That's a total of 500 migrants moving into this tiny community of Brafie, just outside Castlebar in County Mayo.